jump ahead five years in our career just in one project like all that feeling of of of, of, of an achievement because yes it was fast we had to work very fast and but I don't know. I don't. I don't know how how much how many years people wait to be a NASA. NASA suits is one of the student design challenges offered by NASA that wishes to include students in uh, different aspects of um, research and development for space. Um, the goal of these challenges is to include the out of the box thinking that is typical in uh, universities and especially with students so that we can augment what uh, future capabilities uh, humanity will have while exploring the moon and one day Mars. So NASA SUIT stands for NASA Spacesuit User Interface Technologies and it's an augmented reality challenge created by NASA engineers uh, to uh, collaborate with a multitude of different colleges from around the nation. So what we wanted to do is be able to get ahead of the curve and have students designing solutions for the future work that our NASA engineers and, and technicians would be able to do. So um, the idea of this augmented reality system would build into their visors, into their helmets, and it would allow them to talk to others who are uh, assisting with the missions, as well as access uh, information such as 3D models of components, for example, that they are supposed to fix. Our interface opens up to a main view that displays an astronaut's telemetry values such as oxygen rate, fan RPMs, and battery life in the top left corner. These values update every few seconds and will also trigger a warning message in case the values go out of the normal range. And the user can use specific hand gestures such as a thumbs up, closed fist, and an OK sign, as well as speech commands to select or interact with the different features. And this gives the user a way to navigate the system without having to use an extra tool like a remote when interacting with the system. We use the hand gestures to pull the main uh, menu up, which provides several options to choose from. And when selected, some of these options will either provide a navigational course uh, to a destination, such as the rover or the lander, or it'll allow the user to pull up other windows. And then the top right corner is a mini map. And this shows the astronauts' current and saved locations. And below the mini map is a little panel that the user um, can use to set and view saved locations. And here we're using the mini map to select a destination to navigate to. And the pointed finger can be used to select this feature. And once selected, the mini map you can see sets the destination point and provides a path to guide the astronaut to the destination. And the distance between the astronaut and the de destination is also noted in the mini map that gets updated as well. And here we're pulling up a science sampling menu and that provides um, a number of different pages the user can scroll through. Um, uh, the user can use the left fist and the right fist to scroll through uh, the different pages of the science sampling menu. And um, these pages, they, they provide instructions on completing specific sampling tasks. So the astronaut can just, instead of having to have some sort of booklet or open something on maybe the sleeve of their suit or something that's attached to them, they can just have it right in front of their face. Once the NASA Suits engineers had presented a call for proposals, a small team within the University of Baltimore had made a proposal, a detailed proposal of what our ideas were for augmented reality and submitted that to the staff in control of NASA Suits. And they read through all the proposals and determined that they wanted to see our idea come into fruition. And now we're here. Uh, we started with just seven students and then over the years we have grown to a group of 17 this semester. Uh, originally we only had uh, two majors, now we have uh, five majors. Uh, we have undergraduate students, graduate students, as well as a doctoral candidate who is most likely going to do her thesis uh, work on this project. The experience showed me that, that this is, that I chose the right path. That's the first thing. There were so many things that we had no idea how to do. So many of them. And, and in, like in the real world, if you don't know something, you just go and learn it, period. There's no walk around 
like yeah there's this new technology this new thing we need to learn it like by next week and everybody grew personally and separately like we all learned different things that the other probably didn't because he was concentrating on something else but so at the end we became an enterprise we became like a company and and everybody had their identity we got We, we, we got the, the 3D modelers, we got the guy that do the animation, we have database, we have Android application, we have project management. But at the end, at the end, everybody just got their rhythm and they, they flew away. The project that our students are working on very much resembles the traditional projects that NASA has. We have um, application development, we have design, we have operating systems, networking, security, uh, as well as communication and documentation, which are extremely important in terms of uh, future employment. In many cases, then, students found a path that perhaps they were not expecting. Uh, in some cases, uh, students ended up working for um, government agencies or government contractors um, doing, for example, 3D modeling or uh, programming. So even though the students work on this project that is relatively um, unrealistic in terms of how can this particular project get them a job doing this exact um, type of application, uh, the students still walk out with a series of skills that are very in line with what the market requires. First of all, technical skills on how to program, how to problem solve, how to uh, make sure that something runs you know, according to the specifications. Uh, another huge component is communications and documentation. Those are two of the skills that most employers are looking for in employees simply because um, talking about programming is difficult. Talking about information information systems or information technology is difficult. Uh, those are extremely valuable skills that you can certainly utilize in um, everyday uh, workplaces where even though they are not doing necessarily augmented reality type um, work, however, many of the skills still transfer to that particular uh, aspect of their career. Yeah, I think one of the things that's built uh, from this for, for the student Uh, at universities like the University of Baltimore is those critical skills, communication, creativity, critical thinking, and teamwork. And I think those together are big components of what it takes for a team to be successful. University of Baltimore is one of the, the top producers of, of papers and uh, technical journal appearances, technical conference appearances. We're very happy to be working with University of Baltimore as a suits team. So the NASA suits project appealed to me because first of all, the name NASA in the front, it's a big deal and it attracted my attention, especially me being newer to the group. I get a lot of mentorship and I could go to pretty much anyone to build a skill if I'd like to, or even just ask for help. Experiences like working with the Astro Bees really helped mold my future. This experience has definitely helped me um, to be able to put myself out there more, especially because in simulation and game design, there's not a lot of representation in terms of science-based simulation and game design and being able to present that work in a environment that there to curate science-related uh, science related themes has been really helpful to present in my resume. So a lot of employers are very interested in hearing about uh, NASA, anything with the word NASA, they're just instantly interested about it. So it's definitely been a conversation starter. Um, and to be here now is just, I'm proud of being a UB student. I think, I think to say the least, like the school is so underrated in so many different ways. And to be at the, to be competing or to be collaborating rather with a team of Ivy League students at this kind of challenge, I mean, that's, that's just an amazing thing, an amazing accomplishment that this school should be proud of and everyone who's part of the school should be proud of. Even though I'm 
um, extremely appreciative of all the visibility that this national competition have has. Um, the part that's most rewarding is to see the students, especially students who are come from a different background, students who are trying to make a change in their lives, really get technology, really understand what they are doing and really be able to perform. Um, so to me personally, um, and professionally, um, since I've chosen education as, as my, uh, my path, um, to me it's extremely rewarding to work with the students. The outcome is fantastic. The idea that what our students produce can be seen nationally, hopefully internationally, and hey, uh, even universally, as um, we may bring one day some of our solutions to the moon or to Mars, that's fantastic. However, for me as an educator, seeing how students grow into their new career, grow into their new skills, and uh, even just become confident presenting, even if they never raised their hand in class, but now they can present to a series of uh, engineers who work for NASA, uh, to me, that's the real reward.